Hello, um, last time we were working on uh, building this binary tree and, um, and I had the node class and I kind of copied that and just cleaned up some prints and things like that from last time. Uh, but this is basically where we were last time and we were working on this contains method. Remember, this is a special method that lets us do things like say, you know, is f n in, the, in my tree, right? I'm starting from my root, right? This n operator is going to call contains. And, um, and, and we did it recursively, right? We would first check if the value we, we were looking for um, is in the root. And um, if it is, well, that's very lucky, right? Because we don't have to look at anything else. We immediately have our answer. Uh, but you might remember from when we were learning about complexity analysis, we often want to think about the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is that we'd have to end up looking at everything before we finally realized that, well, this node actually isn't in the tree, right? So we'd curs recursively check everything to the left and recursively check everything to the right and, um, and ultimately end up looking at every, every node. And so this is a binary tree and we can search through it, right? I kind of look, look at this contains as a way of doing a search. But if we try to um, increase this to, or kind of change this to be a binary search tree where it's specifically designed to that, uh, we get two new rules. So those rules are, you know, every value in the left subtree of a node must be less than that node's value. So that's one rule. And then we're going to have kind of a similar rule. Every value in the right subtree of a node must be greater than a node's value. And, um, and well, how is that going to help us? When I'm down here and I'm, I'm kind of calling this contains method, uh, right now I always uh, might have to check both my left and, and my right children. But think about what this rule means. Every value in the left subtree must be less than the node's value. And, and so let's say my value is 5 and I'm looking for 7. I don't know if it's in the tree, but if it is, it has to be over here, right? It's not allowed to be in my left subtree. It can't be my left child, and it can't be any descendant of my left child, right? My left child is the root of that left subtree, right? So these rules, if I kind of am careful about uh, how I put my nodes in my tree, are going to let me be able to write this more efficiently. <clears throat> okay, so let's build a tree. So I'm going to say tree equals node of, maybe, maybe I'll have the root be D. Let's just take a peek at that. And, um, and, and you know what, I have to kind of just run from the start. I'm going to do that. And, um, and I run that and I have my node. And, um, and let's say like to the left, I'll say tree dot, um, you know, left equals node of, Mm, let me think. I guess I will put over there um, B. And tree to the right will be node E, kind of like that. Um, is this a binary search tree? Well, I have to think a little bit carefully. Let me, let me just try to write down the order of the letters just so that we're really uh, kind of on the same page. So the letter order is A, B, C, D, E, F. G. These are going to be the, the seven nodes I put here. And so, you know, for example, A is less than B. So let me check this. So here is my node, and that's D. And the only value in the left subtree is B, and B is less than D. That's good. And the only value in, in my right subtree is E, and that's greater than D. So yes, this is a binary search tree. So what, what if I do this? What if I... Um, uh, what if I had something like, um, may, maybe over here, let's say I had A. That's still a binary search tree. But then let's say I did something like this. I said tree dot left dot left equals node of B and tree dot left dot right equals node of C. And I look at that. Is that a binary search tree? Well, let me check. So everything in the left subtree of D has to be less than D. So I kind of look at all these values. Um, so those are all A, B, and C. All of those come before D. Um, e comes after D. 
but it's not a binary search tree. And, and the reason is that this idea of kind of subtrees of a node is recursive, right? So even though D is happy, right? D obeys these two rules. Every value in the left subtree of a node must be less than that node's value. This rule right here uh, doesn't get followed when I go one level deeper, right? So here I'm looking at this node and in the left subtree of that node I have B. And guess what? B is not less than A. So even though D is happy, A is unhappy, right? So this is not a valid binary search tree. So I, I kind of have to like think about the order I would put these three to make that work. And, and so I think what I want to do is for these three, I kind of have to pick the letter in the middle, which is B. And so I'll do this like, so B, I'll just try to swap A and B. Great, and this is, a, this is a perfectly fine binary search tree. Okay, let's add some more letters. So I'm gonna say tree dot right equals that, you know, the right of the right equals node uh, of F. And let's, let's go even farther to the right, dot right equals node of G. Is this a binary search tree? Well, I already checked out the left-hand side, so I'm not going to spend time on that. Um, let me see if D is happy with respect to its right subtree. Uh, e and... I'm sorry, let me just... Uh, I meant to put it like that. Okay, is this a binary search tree? Um, D is happy because E, F, and G are in its right subtree, and all of those are greater than D. Is E happy? Yes, because everything in its right subtree comes after E. Is F happy? Yes, because G is the only thing in its right subtree and that comes afterwards. So yes, this is a binary tree and uh, maybe not the best binary tree because when we have kind of these long chains like this, that's gonna slow things down, but it does follow these rules. So, so eventually where I talk about you know, not only does this classify as a binary search tree, but is it a good binary search tree? And that will be kind of coming up next. I'm just gonna put that question down there so it's in our mind. Is a particular binary search tree a good one? And we're gonna introduce this notion of it's, it's balanced, right? Later, and, and so balance basically means, well, I don't have these long strings like this. Um, you could have imagined that the right-hand side would be a nice cluster of three, you know, a node with two children, uh, just like it is on the left, right? I mean, I could have a similar pattern on the right and that'd be a more balanced tree. Okay, but this is a binary search tree and it does mean that when I'm calling contains, I have some options to kind of search through faster. Okay, so, so let's think about this. What am I doing? Here I'm checking if I have the exact value exactly and that can be just like before, okay? Now, now here I, I might end up, the way the code is written now, I might end up checking both the left and right hand side of a node, but I don't really have to do that anymore, right? I can say something like um, if self.value is less than x, well in that case, I only have to look left. Otherwise, if self.value is greater than x, then guess what? I only have to look to the right. I can do that. And, and really, I mean, I can clean this up a little bit because I'll never even get to here if, if this ends up being true. So, so maybe it's just, at least in my mind, it makes a little more sense to kind of have these three cases, right? Either I have it here or I'll check left or I'll, or I'll check right. Now, Notice that in this new case, right, I kind of have this one conditional if, elif, elif, one of these three things is going to run. And really, I'll never even get to here, right? Because, because I mean, if it's not equal and it's not less than, then it must be greater. So I'm just trying to actually make a note here. I'm just trying to say else. I know one of these three things will run. Uh, I'll just make a note here, must be true. 
okay, these are my three cases. I have it. Uh, I check left or I check right. And, and and now, right, I kind of, the way I structured this before is that if, if my left child had it, um, I would return true. Otherwise, I wouldn't really do anything. I just kind of continue on because maybe my right child would have it. Um, but at this point, I know that if I don't have the value, if it's anywhere, it's going to be in my left child. So I can actually clean this up a little bit. I can just say return, return that, right? If I don't have it and the value is less than my node's value, if it's anywhere, it's going to be in the left, right? So I can directly immediately return that. And that's why it's faster, right? We're never going to have these cases where I have to run some code on both the the, both the right and the left, right? I'm just trying to kind of clean this up like so. Okay. Let's try uh, playing with this a little bit. First off, you know, hey, let's just see if it even is correct, right? Um, what's the cleanest way to do that? I'd like to kind of be able to see that method. So we know that all of these letters are in here, right? So maybe I'll just um, say, uh, you know, is A in my tree and um and right away i guess i have a I have a problem don't i there must be some sort of bug here not anticipated um So one issue I'm seeing is that I'm never going to ever return false, right? I kind of do this recursive call, but when, when do I actually return false? Um, and you know what I think that should be is, I guess, you know, if I know it has to go left, but I have no left, right? So it actually is, I kind of prematurely got rid of this, right? I might, I might, you know, not even be able to do this, right? So even though I may do one of these three cases, it doesn't guarantee I'm going to return, right? It only returns if I have the, those left or right children. So let me, let me try to, so that was not my main problem. But let me kind of just print off what I'm checking, right? I'm going to print off self.value. So I check, and let me just kind of, um, let me just print off what my tree looks like and kind of think through what's happening, right? So I check at the top. Do I have uh, have it at D? I'm looking for A, right? And um, and then I head down here. So I, I guess I'm checking E next, which is a little bit strange, right? Why did I go to the right, even though I'm looking for A, which is to the left? You know what the, my problem is, is uh, this is backwards, right? What I want to know is if the value I'm looking for is smaller than me. Then I go to the left, and then this is the opposite here. I'm going to do that. Okay, and now it actually finds it. Thank goodness. Okay, so I have B. Uh, you know, do I have C? Uh, do I have F? I'm just going to check a few. And um, and do I have? Let me check something I don't have, like X. That's false. Well, what you can see here is that. I never have to check all the nodes before, even when I'm looking for something that's not in the tree. Why? Well, I know if X were in here, it would be somewhere way over here to the right. So even in the worst case, I never have to look at any of these nodes here um, on the left. Okay, so I've kind of carefully constructed this binary search tree and it's more efficient now. I never have to check all the nodes. Now, um, what I wanna talk about next, right? If I'm gonna look at this tree, is I, I had to think very carefully, right? Every time I added something, I kind of checked, like, well, uh, is it still a binary search tree? What I'd like to do is to have a, a value or have a ma method that will add um, values for me and kind of put them in their proper place. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say define add. And um, let me say self here. And I want to add a value. And um, how am I going to do this? 
Uh, I need to find a home for that. And, and so really, well, where does the home go? Um, it really kind of matters, well, for my particular node, should this value end up to my left or to my right? So I can say if, um, if value, or I guess to be consistent, up here I was using x, so maybe I'll use x here too. If x is less than self.value, you know, I want to add it to left subtree. And uh, otherwise, that value, if it's bigger than that, then I want to add it to the right subtree. And so I guess if I'm trying to add it to the left, there's kind of two possibilities, right? Um, one is that maybe I don't even have a left child yet, right? So I can say if self.left equals none, well, guess who gets to be my new left child? A node with this x value. I can say self.left equals node with that value, right? This value is smaller than, uh, oh, this x, right? This this new value I'm inserting is, is kind of less than me. And so it's going to go to my left, and guess what? There's already an open spot there. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when when I uh, you know I don't have an open spot to my left. So I'm going to let you think about that for a moment while I copy this down here and kind of do the same thing on the right-hand side. So I'm going to say self.right. You know, if this x value is bigger than me, and I have a space to the right, well, I'm just gonna shove it right there. What can I do here, right? I mean, I don't have space immediately to my left. You know, it's like, imagine, or, or my right. Imagine I'm this node here, this D, and let's say I added Z. I'm like, okay, well, I know Z comes after D. So I look here and I'm like, well, you know, there's all, already a spot taken to my right. You know what I can do is I can do it recursively, right? Because maybe I don't have a spot on my right, but you know, in this case, my right child has a spot that it could put it. Or, you know, if my right child doesn't have it, maybe uh, some grandchild in the right tree or a great grandchild. So if I kind of keep going down, right, on any side of the tree, eventually I'm gonna hit an end and I can always kind of add on more children there. So so really what I want to do is I'm like, well, hey, if I already have a left child, then it's their job, their job to add it. And um, my left child to add it. You know, you find a place for it. And here, if I already have a right child, then it's going to be my right child's job to add it. Okay. And, well, let's think about this. Here I've added a bunch of nodes. Let, let's actually, let's actually do this now. I can simplify this a lot, can I? I can just add B. And, and, and you know, before I go too far, <laughs> let's actually make sure it's working, right? So I start with a root of D, and then I add B, and perfect, it puts B as my left subchild. What if I say tree dot add A? Bingo, okay, so you know, my left child was already taken, but I can uh, put it underneath my left child as a grandchild. Let's just kind of add all of these, right? I'm going to say tree dot add. Maybe just let me copy all of this. I'm going to insert all my nodes and kind of see what I end up with. All right, kind of the same picture as before. Right, so, so now I've kind of done two things, right? And then let's just check that this still works, right? I can still say things like, you know, is G in tree, and then it finds it. And, and you know, at this point, I can probably get rid of that, that print, right? So let me head back down here. This is great, right? So I'm kind of recursively adding things and finding a home for them. And then kind of since I choose a good placement for all of them, uh, then I can very efficiently run this later. Okay, now, now one thing I want you to think about now is we already talked a little bit about how this is not great, right? It kind of makes it, uh, since it's long and strung out, it means that if I have a very long chain here, even though it's technically a binary search tree, going to the end of the chain is going to take a long time. And, and so 
what really matters is the order in which I insert things. But what I'd kind of like over here is if this node was F, is if this node was F, then it could have E and G as its left child and, and right child. And so you kind of want nodes that are kind of in the middle, right? If I want the node in the middle of here to come before the two children, right? So, so if I just switch this, right? If I kind of just do F before E, then F is going to land right here, and I'm going to end up with a with a better tree. It's a more balanced tree, and you know what? I kind of regret now uh, getting rid of this because I could have be showing you. I could show you how it's more efficient, right? I only have to check three things now to get to G because G isn't as deep as it once was, and really now at most I only ever have to check three nodes, and then I'm done, right? So this will be much more efficient.